What I've realized about this job is that if you're stressed about making money, then it's gonna be so much harder when it comes to making the money. I find it so bizarre. Like, everyone watches Selling Sunset and they think, oh, real estate is one of the most glamorous jobs and everyone looks amazing and things like that. I don't have time. For What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the JB Show. Today I'm joined by Hamida, who is a very entrepreneurial, driven, young lady, same age as me actually, and we are in Dubai right now. I'm recording this podcast because we're going to be talking all about Dubai and the real estate market and just generally keeping it quite casual today. Um, she also does a lot on YouTube. So she's an upcoming YouTube star. She films some insane content and she does it better than a lot of people. And it's very impressive. And that's how we know each other because I came across her YouTube channel. So guys, stay tuned. This is going to be a great one. Hamida, welcome to the show, Thank first of all. Thank you for having me. It was uh, quite, a, quite an intro. Yeah, quite an <laughs> intro. I mean... I want you to introduce yourself because I think it makes it, uh, you know, give the people a little bit more depth about what you actually do. So I actually came to Dubai um, eight months ago. Um, and when I came to Dubai, I was just like content creating. I just wanted to do luxury property tours. And I started off doing that. It's something that I fell into. But my history is actually working for an NFT news company. So I've got experience in the crypto industry. I was mostly investing. Mm. Um, and when we came to Dubai, we realized it's such a big crypto hub. Mm -hmm. And I started doing more content creating on the luxury side of things and then also fell into real estate as well. So really and truly, I do like a bunch of things. Yes. Um, but it all kind of like falls in line together. Absolutely. You know I mean? Yeah, of course. And you know, you were content creating in the real estate space and now you're a real estate agent. Similar story to me. I was creating content, not behind the camera. I was behind the camera though. And then I fell into real estate, you know, so yeah, it was yeah. kind of the same journey in a way, but what's actually made you want to get into real estate? You know, what was the journey like? Do you know what? Um, for me, I didn't actually want to get into real estate. I just wanted to stay into the content creating side. Um, and I actually met someone on Instagram so they reached out to me and they said oh can you come and film one of my properties mm. I said look I was in London at the time I said look I'll fly back just to create content so I flew all the way back to Dubai to film a house and it was actually for Chris yeah um, and Chris recruited me and I started working in real estate and to be honest it wasn't something that I wanted to do but I saw how he worked and how the processes were and I realized in the real estate industry there's so many things that you can improve on I'm sure you know mm -hmm. like as an an agent the processes being transparent making sure that your clients have got everything done from A to B and I felt like I could do that in this space much better than than most people you know no it's a hundred percent true I mean let's talk about the real estate market in a way from a broker's perspective because when you start when you start in real estate like everyone I mean I get a lot of messages asking me about how's the real estate everyone just sees it as like some glamorous you know, you can make a load of money, but let's be honest, like the hustle of it is hard. It's so hard. I find it so bizarre. Like everyone watches Selling Sunset and they think, oh, real estate is one of the most glamorous jobs and everyone looks amazing and things like that. I don't have time for anything. No. I wake up, I go gym. I used to read so much. I barely <laughs> re read anymore. I like look at my phone. My neck hurts from just replying to text messages all the time. You're constantly working just have to hustle it's mm -hmm. such a grind it's not like what people think no do you know what I mean like it's not glamorous at all no what do you find the hardest part is of being an agent the highs and the lows oh so many highs and lows I think you've got to be ready for a whirlwind just as you think you're getting a deal over the line the client yeah. might blank you yeah. they might just stop replying they might just disappear off the face of the earth yeah. They might block you. And yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you question like, holy shit, I've worked on this for so long. What's happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's one of those ones where it's like one minute you've got like some good news. Like the other day I had like, I had to like equalize. I had like really bad news. Then I had really good news. And then I just didn't know like how to, how to feel. Mm. Um, and this is what this job is. It's like an emotional whirlwind. Like one minute is. you're cold calling. So I absolutely love cold calling. Like, I have no issue with mm, it. It's Something. not my favorite, but I'm good at it, but yeah. I don't love it. I love it. I just love the, the chase, you know, like mm. my personality. I just love the, yeah. the chase of knowing that you're going to get that person over the line. Um, but it's the deals, the whole like, you're going to get this and it goes this way. And it's like, it just turns. It just mm -hmm. turns. What about you? What do you think that's difficult about this job? I think that 100% the highs and the lows make it very, you know, almost like, you know, you work so hard for something, you feel like you should be rewarded, but it can just easily go either way. You know, sometimes, you know, you get so close to a deal and then you find out the buyer has 
uh, but you know, gone through another agent or something. So it can really get you down. And then, you know, it's constantly going back to square one and that feeling of, you know, you really want to succeed, but sometimes you feel like the world isn't allowing it. Yeah. But saying that, I think at the start that hurts a lot, but then when you start to get into the process of it and then you do start to see deals in, you know, then your mindset starts to change and it's almost like you're not so affected by it. Yeah, yeah. I think like if you've got a strong mindset in this industry, then it's great. But like we're all human at the end of the day. Like we all say that we all say that we've got a strong mindset, but it's natural for us to just be like one day like feeling down. And it's natural for us to one day be feeling really great because you've got a deal in and stuff like that. Um, but you learn so much from the processes here, like, you know, when a deal doesn't go through or when a client's put an offer in and he's like countering it and then there's other things that come into play, like you get so many obstacles yeah. in, in this industry, like obstacles that you didn't know, like you'll be on something and there's actually like three other people behind you trying to create the obstacle. Yeah, we've all done it. Mm. You know, I've gone on multiple viewings with a guy and then for him to tell me like, yeah, really like what you said, what you showed me, really appreciate all the work you put in, but unfortunately I found something like, even though I've been showing him stuff on the palm, he's then bought something in downtown with a downtown agent. And it's like, come on, man, I put so much effort into that, mm. you know? But, you know, that's just part of the hustle. And, you know, you've got to love and respect the game. And that's why, you know, for me, uh, getting into real estate, the main reason was to really see how far I could push myself because there's no other industry, or there is, but in my opinion, right now in Dubai, there's not really another industry that can reward you like this yeah, for the hustle for sure. that you put in. For sure, like comparing like Dubai to what you did, like because obviously in London, you look at the commission rates and how much they're paying and like the market in London, yeah, it's great. Like it's a, it's a historic city, but like the agents here to what they earn in Dubai, like I was speaking to an agent in London, she takes home like a third of what a decent agent here takes Well, home. they only get a percent. The company take a percent and then you sometimes get 5% of the 1%. Yeah, and That's, then she gets taxed. Yeah, and then she gets taxed, like, come on. Yeah. That's the thing. But I think what people don't realise when they come here is that, like, you know, there's not that much uniqueness to real estate in terms of marketing and stuff like that. People, you know, we make videos and we do our own thing, but, you know, the traditional way of doing it is getting a cold call, getting a, getting a listing, selling that through a property finder website, and um, I think people just don't realize what effort they're going to have to put in. Yeah. You yeah. know? This is the thing. I feel like the Dubai real estate market is very close to, to what we're going to see. Very, It's very close to America. Like mm -hmm. what Amer the US has done when it comes to real estate. And you see the way the agents have marketed themselves. You see the properties. You see the quality. It's going to happen in Dubai. You're going to see more agents become more out there when it comes to the properties in terms of marketing doing the videos uh, and things like that and there's not a lot of that here in dubai and it's mostly like male dominated when, oh, the, when the men yeah. are doing the videos it's not really women that are actually out there and doing mm -hmm. like doing the house tours and stuff no you're right and that's why i love what you do because you know you bring in a uniqueness to what you're doing when it comes to selling same with me being able to create my own content um, and i think the biggest thing uh, you know any advice that I give to anybody is focus like so hard on relationship building yeah. because at the end of the day, these kind of people that want to buy properties, they, they, they are trust, they want to put trust into somebody. So if you're a trusted broker, you know, they're in a sea full of brokers in this city, you know, there's so much option to choose from, but if they can put all of their trust into you, they will be a client for life because they don't want to have to deal with, yeah. with multiple people. These guys have got a lot of money, you know? Yeah, like even I was thinking the other day, because when I first moved over to Dubai, we were in the process of either buying a place or renting a place. So what we did is we stayed in a few Airbnbs in different locations and then we started like looking at places that we wanted to rent. And it was really difficult to have an agent that was transparent and honest mm -hmm. with us. Uh, and like we just wanted to know if the agent would probably turn up on time. Some of the agents don't get to the viewings and things like that. Some of them don't even reply to the messages. I mean, yeah. fair enough if the property is sold, but the courtesy of it is I'll reply to them anyway because they might want something else. Yeah. Even if this property that I had isn't available. Exactly. And I realise that there's really, there's not a lot of people that are actually showing people transparency, respect, mm -hmm. and being completely honest with the client or with someone else. And there's a, there's a lack of that here in Dubai, I think. And as an agent, if you can be honest with the client and be transparent and making sure that, you know, there's a good line of communication between you guys, then the relationship will go far. 100%. And, you know, you can see why so many agents do quit because 
a lot of people, they come over here with this massively high expectation, uh, you know, that they're going to make a load of money, like I said before, but then after they realize that three months have gone by and they've not even done a deal and their savings start running out and they start getting stressed. What I've realized about this job is that if you're stressed about making money, then it's going to be so much harder when it comes to making the money. For example, I, one of my sales came from a, a guest coming onto my podcast his, and his name was Kenneth. He's now a friend of mine. And he came on my podcast and we spoke about uh, you know, the property market and I didn't even tell him I was an agent really. I told him I didn't really speak about it though with no intentions of selling him anything. And he was already working with another broker uh, from a different company. But then he was like, Joe, have you got any options, any off-plan options that you can share with me? And I said, I do actually. And then I shared them with him and the, no the other agent also shared the same property but he went through me and bought it off me because he decided that you know, uh, you know he, he respects me, he sees the effort that I'm putting in around the sale, mm -hmm. and he sees that I'm driven, Yeah. and I made a sale from it, yeah. you know? Yeah, I do feel that from you, like you are really driven, like I've seen you work really hard, especially when it comes to your clients, you go above and beyond, I think. That's like, very kind of you yeah, to no, tell I me that. I have noticed that, yeah. I have noticed that. Even like, um, there's a thing that I shared with you, is like a PowerPoint presentation, you know when a um, off-plan option came out? Yeah. And we kind of sent the proposals to the clients and stuff, and we go through the nitty-gritty details of like, how much you'll rent for, how much you'll go on short let for, what's the ROI, how much could you possibly sell the property for in four to five years' time? Those things investors want to see. They want to see the agent has gone and done all the research for them before they even have to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean about going above and beyond for your clients and being like essentially the other half. Absolutely. Them. You know what I mean? Of course. And what do you think? Because I want to talk about a bit, a bit about Dubai now and the mindset when you come here. Because for me, when I moved to Dubai, like it's been such a whirlwind. Like I've never lived anywhere like this. I lived in you know, in Warrington, where I'm from, then I moved to Oxford, then I moved to Marbella, and then I moved to Dubai. It was like, Marbella to Dubai? You meet a Spanish person, and the way that their mentality is, it's a bit relaxed and chilled out. Really? Then, yeah, it's like, we'll do everything tomorrow, mañana. But then moving to Dubai, it's like a million miles an hour. Yeah. And it is just a non-stop grind. And I find that at times, it can be taxing. It is, yeah. It's so, like when I first, so basically, I didn't want to move here at all. Like Where did my, you want to move to? I, I wanted to stay in London because I've got my family there, I've got my brothers, I've got my sisters, I've got 10 nephews, 10 nieces, like mm -hmm. it's such a big family. I didn't want to leave them yeah. and then come here. Um, and then when I came here, like my mindset was just like, I was just so stuck on what I was doing in London and you literally have to level up. That, like you can't just be at the mindset that you had in the UK. Like there's always someone better than you. There's someone that's working when you're sleeping. There's someone doing something when you're not doing something. So you're constantly on the go. Like you don't have time for anything. I feel like it's a very motivated city. So tell me this then, what's the difference in your opinion from a business perspective and I'm not gonna be talking about lifestyle, business perspective, London versus Dubai. You're gonna have like I think you're the best salespeople in the world are right here in Dubai right now, mm -hmm. and I think that if you are gonna set up a business here, there's gonna be more freedom, more flexibility, and I feel like everybody in Dubai has got that hustle mentality. Like what did you find about London? Did you find most people in London were like unhappy? I felt like people in London were unhappy. They were happy with what they were doing and a bit lazy. Mm. Like a bit lazy, a bit entitled. You really? Mm. Wow. I, I what do you mean by that? Like, in, in, in Dubai, everyone knows they have to fend for themselves. Well, I did a podcast the other day and a guy was like, in Dubai, there's always someone basically with a bigger dick than you. That's yeah. how, that's, and to be honest, that's just how it is. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, like, you come to Dubai and no matter how successful you feel like you are. So there's not really a sense of entitlement, all right, you know, because even if you're making 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars a month, still gonna be nothing compared to some That's other guys I mean. here. Yeah, and in London, I felt like even if you had a little bit of success, you could kind of like show it and act a certain way. But here, it's like, you have to humble yourself. 100%. Uh, hum humble yourself. And uh, if you are starting a business here, like, this is a very innovative country. Do you know what I mean? Like there's- City. Yeah, city, sorry. <laughs> I always do I that. Always do Someone's that. gonna pull you up on it if you don't, <laughs> no, if I don't tell you. It's a very innovative city. You've got crypto, you've got metaverse companies starting here. You've got so many businesses that are moving here. And I just feel like with a country that, uh, with a city that's changing so much, if you are moving your business here, you come in at the right time, your mm -hmm. business will flourish. You know what I mean? Yeah. And do you think the real estate market is becoming, I don't want to say saturated, but it is in a way. But I guess it's probably been like that for, for many years. You know, we've not got, I've not been in real estate for, for a long, long time. 
But I mean, you know, I see companies hiring 20, 30 people every couple of months, you know. I see a lot of brokers coming in with the same like, all right, where are we going to focus on? I'm going to focus here. This is what I'm going to do. You know what? Like there's the word saturated. No, I don't like the word, but I, I mean. I like the word, but like you, if let's just compare like Dubai to the UK or the US, right? It's, it's a growing, growing city, and there's so many things that are happening here. People are moving here. It's one of the safest places to live. Um, real estate is becoming saturated here, don't get me wrong, but the big players will survive. Um, but if the new ones come along and they're doing something different mm -hmm. that the big ones aren't, then you know there's going to be there's going to be a difference, and we're going to see that in in this space. I think. Yeah. And a lot of the big ones are are doing things the traditional way. They're not looking and and innovating and changing or anything like that. You the big to... ones though have built a reputation though, right? So they've already got the the big big players out here have already got the biggest contacts. You know, if you know you're a top broker out in here in Dubai, then you're just going to be referred by all your top clients, and that's just how it's going to work because there's no need to vet somebody if you already know that this guy's worked with this guy. And he's a top broker, then there's no need for you know a whole trusting process. It's like I, I already trust this guy, you know, because he's worked with X, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's like it's not really down to how long the company's been in business. It's really down to the people that are in the business mm -hmm. and if they've got a good reputation. Mm -hmm. um, because brokers are really essentially their own business. Like, yeah. People come to them. They don't really like. When I was working, when I was looking for a property, I never really looked at how long has the business been going. No. I looked at the broker and how, if they replied to my message in time, if they got back to all the questions that I was asking, those sorts of things. Those are quite important if you are buying or if you're renting or anything like that, or even an investor. For sure. And I think a good, like a main takeaway for anyone watching this podcast, which, you know, might be a lot of new upcoming real estate agents that are moving to Dubai or at least thinking about it. I think the biggest thing that I could say to anybody is focus on relationship building, focus on, you know, being respectful to anyone that messages you, even if they, like, yeah, as an agent, like make sure that your reputation, like you, you don't leave a stain because Dubai is so small. Everybody it's very knows, small. Every, yeah, yeah. Everybody like, it seems like a big city with all these skyscrapers and everything, but people know who you are. People will know someone that, you know, you might upset this client or you might upset this person and it will just go around. I think reputation is really important in Dubai. Reputation, respect, consistency of just not giving up when the lows get low. Mm. I'm, listen, I've been guilty of it. Like, there's been days where I'm like, why did I even get into this? You know? But I think it makes you a better person, it makes you a better broker, it makes you a better businessman, and it gives you up a lot of skills for life, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so we spoke about a lot about, you know, from a broker's perspective, but let's see, I mean, hopefully some investors are watching this, let's talk about the ways that people can make money in Dubai right now. So, I'll let you go first. Something that I'm really focusing on is like, so you see the palm, a lot of the houses on the palm are starting to look older, more dated, is going in with flipping. Mm. So going in, doing it, renovating it. There's something like that you can do. You can also develop your own property. So you can do luxury redevelopment, start building your own property. We can source the plots and we can build the property for you. It's amazing. There's so much, there's so much to do when you can also do like leasing, short lets, Airbnb, cash flow properties. There's so many different avenues for you to make money here in property in Dubai, but the buying and flipping is a universal thing. Yeah. Everybody around the world is doing it. People in the UK, even developers that I work with from the UK are doing that now. What about you? What do you think? I would say, I would, you know, strongly agree on what you've just said because a lot of the older villas as well in the good communities, you know, like Jumeirah Islands, Jumeirah Park, the Palm Jumeirah, they're very old, but they're very sought after places to live. Exactly. And even though when you go into the villa, if you can't have a vision for what you want to recreate, you can go and see another villa that's like been redesigned and you know renovated, and then all of a sudden your eyes light up because these are a lot of these older villas as well. You know they were built with size. You know a lot of the old Arabic style villas they were built with so so much plot size compared to the new style of villas. Yeah, yeah. Like in um, uh, you know Jumeirah Island versus Dubai Hills Golf Estate. In Jumeirah Islands, you've got like a built up area of maybe ten thousand square foot, whereas in you know Dubai Hills, you've only got it almost looks like you've got a slightly detached house because you've only got a few meters between each other house. You know, although the built up area is big and the, the, the ceilings are high, 
the new builds, they're just not as unique, you know? Yeah, they're more smaller. Everything seems like slightly smaller, slightly more cramped, depending on the, on the developer, of course. But like I've seen it, I've had a lot of people complain about how the layouts are and things mm -hmm. like that. And I just thought, well, here's a problem. Loads of old homes. Yeah. Here's a solution. Let's go in and, and create some magic. Yeah. And I feel like Dubai is a, a little bit behind when it comes to the flipping side of things. Um, and that's why we have like really good contractors and stuff like that in place to make sure that we give that like American, LA, modern, fresh finish uh, across these homes as well. Yeah, I see a lot of new ta new investors coming to me, Joe, can I get like a one bedroom or a studio and rent it out? And to be honest, that's also a very good market. But you need to be quite strategic because yes, you can buy a one bedroom in an old building for a million dirhams. Let's say that's what, 250,000 yeah. uh, pounds. But if you look at it from an investment perspective, yes, it's gonna generate cash flow, but are you ever gonna be able to resell it for the same price? And if the building's 10, 20 years old, you've gotta remember that we're always developing over here, so you might not be able to resell it for a lot. So from a cash flow perspective, it works, but from an appreciation and cash flow perspective, it doesn't always work, you know? Yeah, I feel like the villa market right now is like where you're gonna see a lot of appreciation. Mm. Cause like, obviously you saw that new project in Blue Waters, you saw that they've got those two towers, 672 units. But like what's really missing in this space is villas, like good villa communities with the amount of families and stuff like that, that are moving in. Yeah. There's a shortage and the rental yield on, on villa communities is pretty high as well. Yeah, the short term rental yield on a villa on the Palm is insane. Like, yeah. you know, you'll see a a lot of football players, you'll see a lot of music artists, you'll see a lot of high net worth individuals yeah. around this time of the year in December, all renting out these places yeah. for like, I don't know, like two, three thousand dollars per night. And then they're taking it for two weeks. Sometimes it's even booked up for two months at three, four thousand dollars a night. You know there's what I mean? A, there's a villa that I saw actually, I'm not going to name it, but mm. it was uh, actually rented out for eight hundred thousand dollars a week. Jesus Christ, Why what not? do you even... It's uh, stunning though. $800,000 a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only a million dollars a week. I mean, you've got to be like extra, like filthy, disgustingly rich to even want to waste that much money. You know, I'll show you the villa. It's absolutely I don't stunning. doubt that it's amazing, it's a but beautiful you've villa. got to be billion, billionaire status for that, right? Yeah, well, there's a few famous people that are actually staying there, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's one of those places, you know? Yeah, so I mean, there's opportunity everywhere, let's be honest. You know, you've got the chances of to make money on short term cash flow you've got long term cash flow you know short term rents or long term rents you've got you know buying and holding and flipping off plan that's also a good one but it's not as big right now just because the prices are sort of of the new off plan is sort of mark uh, at the market price but it's there is still a good option for example blue waters perfect example like that sold out in 6 hours mm. that is easily you will easily be able to resell that. So you need to look at it as like, a, are the developers reputable? Is the location really good? And then you can make money like that. But yeah. then the renovations, like if you can get into that, you can be set. Yeah, that's that's where the I think personally in like real estate is, is a place that I'd probably venture into more. Uh, and that for me is where where I think that I'll be the best at, especially when it comes to buying, flipping, sourcing the right properties and doing it properly for the clients and making sure that the value of the home is much higher. And the thing is, everyone thinks that it's because of the way you design the home is where you make your money. Not really. You have to buy the home at a right price. Mm -hmm. And once you do it up, there's a profit on obviously the renovations and obviously the, the, the price of the house. Yeah, no, it's in a very exciting time in Dubai right yeah, now. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we're seeing a huge influx of celebrities, uh, you know, wealthy individuals, not just coming on holiday anymore, but they're actually moving here. And I think that's that says a lot, you know? Yeah, I think it's the safety aspect of stuff is here of as well. Of course, yeah. Yeah, it's nothing like London. I mean, like even the prices that you get, you have to pay for rent in London or to buy a house in London, it's just not worth it anymore. Like you no. could be a millionaire in London, but you're not safe. Uh, what's the point? What's the point of living in a country where you're not safe and no. you can't walk around with a watch? Uh, whereas in Dubai, you could have like 10 watches on and no one cares, no one bothers you. Um, and that's the thing. Dubai is one of those places. It's becoming like where all the rich and wealthy are coming. They're going to reside here and they're going to have all their homes in different places when they want to go in the summer. Yeah, I mean, take a look at this. I was at a restaurant the other day and it wasn't even like a, it was just in a mall. I would put my phone on the table to reserve the table while I walked over to the chicken shop 
to go and get my chicken, walk back and my phone is just there as if a little, you know, where else in the world can you do that right now? Yeah, literally. I feel like Dubai is one of those places and if the rich and wealthy and people like that are flocking here, then this is the best place to be. Um, look, who knows how long it's going to be like this for, if like more people are coming, but I feel like with the way the government is set up here and how strict they are, I don't think that it's going to turn anything like the UK anytime soon. No, and I think people respect the fact that it's like this here and everybody almost wants to keep it like that, you know? Yeah. Because you don't want to ruin it for everyone. All right, there are small incidents that go on throughout, but I mean, there's definitely nothing catastrophic that's changing the way that it is about the city, you know? Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they'll be well on top of it anyway, because at the end of the day, they can't damage their, this reputation that they've got because it's such a business-driven country. And if they, city, and <laughs> if they, well, actually, the UAE, like, it's a very safe yeah, place yeah, anyway, yeah. but, you know, as a country, as a whole, if they damage their reputation, then they can't afford to lose all these people. So I'm sure they'll try their best. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even with like with Qatar and the World Cup, like you've seen, there's been an influx of people inquiring for properties here in Dubai because they've seen how the Middle East have done things. It's much better than the other Western countries, especially when it comes to the safety aspect. And some of the homes, you're going to see the most beautiful homes in the world. Um, and how everything is here, like even the schools, um, the schools are getting better here for families to move over mm -hmm. here, those sorts of things. So I think Dubai is definitely a place to look out for. And if you were to compare it to places like London, Singapore, New York, you'll see the prices don't even match up. No, to that. they don't. We Not are even close. far more cheaper in Dubai than in London or Singapore. But that won't be forever. So if you're still debating it, then... You snooze, you lose, because it's not always going to be like that. At the end of the day, True. the demand's going to go through the roof, and at some point, they're going to be like matching these other cities, you know? And at some point, they're going to stop building off plan, I think, because they're going to have to meet the demand for the secondary market 100%. and making sure that, obviously, that the economy's still going. Because mm. if you keep building, then, of course, Absolutely. the market's going to... So, Hamida, we're going to leave that there for today. It's Thank been you. great to chat with you. I, uh, I will leave all of the details of your YouTube channel in the description below so everybody can see it. So, guys, thank you all for watching. As always, like, subscribe, share it. Keep supporting the channel because we are growing. We're on about 1.5 thousand subscribers now, so we are slowly getting there. You're going to see the JV show worldwide at some point. So, thank you so much, Hamida. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem.